educators, please welcome Mr. Astradi Chairman. All right, it's, it's me now, Mega. Yes, please, <laughs> right. Mr. Hi, Buenas. Adi. Hello, 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 Buenas. hello, Mega. So hello, nice to meet you again, Adi. Adi. Nice to see you, nice ma'am. Nice to meet you. All right, Mega, I will need your help to. Uh, be okay, uh, today we're going to talk uh, uh, about a topic that is very, very. I think it's very in today, in demand, because um, many of the, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, schools uh, and, and learning environments uh, in Indonesia and also around the world, uh, they, they've been talking about this, differentiated learning, okay? But uh, I don't know, let's see if anyone here actually, uh, well, uh, I, I, want to, I want to find out first, would you like to learn in a fun way or a boring way? Because I know we are doing digital learning. Fun or boring way? Type down over there on the chat box, everybody. Well, I'm expecting to find someone typing down boring. <laughs> okay, let's see what's going to happen. What do we have here? Fun or boring? Come on. Oh, fun, 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 of course. Oh, but fun but serious. Love that. Okay, nice. Oh, okay, all right. No one wants to say boring, yeah? Man, no, why not? <laughs> Why not a boy? All right. So uh, when we talk about differentiated learning, okay. Now I I have three questions. Uh, Baika, I would like to invite three people uh, from all the audience uh, to uh, participate, to contribute, and to share. Yeah. So uh, if anybody sure. in the group would like to raise your hand and then uh, share your opinion what you think we would like to hear from you, okay, about these three questions, okay? So the first, the second, and the third, based on who's coming up first. Come on, anyone raising hand? Uh, as long as I know differentiated learning means that we apply the, what we call it, the syllabus based on the student's wishes. Means that we have to know our students first and then we can apply the lessons based on the student's need. Okay, but we have to go. the keywords, know your students and then meet their needs. Okay, yeah. know your students and meet their needs. Love that. Amazing. Wow. Okay, good. Next one, number two. Bye. Hello, uh, Mr. Adi. Hi, guys. Uh, so, number two, yeah. what do you want to learn more about differentiated learning? So, uh, yeah, we've been uh, hearing about it a lot. Uh, how we should meet the need of our students and stuff like that. But the thing is, uh, what we want to learn more is how uh, practical things can be applied in our class. Ms. Radi. Yes. Um, okay. Well, I'm not familiar with the concept yet, but I assume that differentiated learning is um, where we apply different kinds of activities uh, to achieve certain goals, I guess, but not just uh, learning language activities, maybe in a form of like musical activities activities or um, um, that improves their interpersonal skills and the likes. And I guess um, I've been using Think Book and or Think Series, and I guess they have these kind of activities called um, 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 that boost their critical thinking. I guess it's a part of uh, learning, a differentiated learning, I assume. <laughs> so I guess, yes, probably. Nice, big round of applause, thank you. Yes, in Think, there are some options that you can use uh, as activities for differentiated activities for different learners, yeah? Amazing, love that. Good, now, everybody, uh, let's see if you actually think, okay? Don't worry, if you haven't done it, don't worry. At least you think you've done it, okay? At least you think you've done it. So how do you differentiate learning in your class? If you've got your experience, then how you did that? Okay, if you haven't got your experience, then what do you think can be done? All right, can you type it down in the chat box, everyone? Type down on the chat box. I need everybody to participate. Uh, otherwise, then remember karma. Yeah, so you know karma? Like teacher, like students. Yeah, what you do in my class will happen in your class too. If you're active in my class, then your students will be active in your class. Okay, so remember that. So if you're not active, <laughs> you will not get active students too. All right, good. So, okay, type down in the chat box. I differentiate learning by, what can you do to differentiate learning? Come on, on the chat box. Maeka will help me if we've got any answers or responses. Yeah, sure, Mr. Adi. Mm. I think they are still typing. Yes. 
Uh, shall we give we get them one? Uh, 30 seconds? Mm, okay. We already got one from, I think it's Miss Asrin Asrifi. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm really sorry that sorry, that's not. Oh, Miss from Miss Fatima, knowing my students. Mm, can we invite Miss, Miss Fatima to come on mic, please? Okay, Miss Fatima, would you please to open your mic? Yes, sir. Ah, okay. Hi, Bu Fatima. Hi, sir. <laughs> yes, please. What do you think? How do you differentiate your learning? Well, actually, uh, from my experience, no uh, I try to to know my students well, like like it said before. <clears throat> uh, Bu Fatima, can we see your video, if you don't mind, if you're not in a difficult situation? Okay, now we can see you. Okay, so yeah, uh, knowing your students, how, how can you know your students? What do you need to know about your students? Yeah, I mean, uh, each class seems uh, can be different. I mean, the type of students can be different. Uh, I uh, sometimes I find that uh, they are in the same grade, but uh, for example, grade eight, uh, but uh, different. Uh, they can have different type of students. They one class could be very, you know, like uh, uh, even though we give extra energy for, uh, you know, like ice breaking and try to make the class fun, but they they seem to be just like calm while another class like we only give uh, something simple uh, they, then they can be so enthusiastic that's what i mean actually ah Sorry. your your class profile yeah knowing the differences that you have in your class right uh, some class are very active some class are some classes are very active some classes are, are a bit quiet like that yeah thank you Fatima. big round of applause for uh, Fatima. and uh, do we have anyone else Baika? I think from Miss Elvira, it's kind of interesting. Maybe Miss uh, Elvira can open her mic, or yes. should I read the comments, Miss Radi? Uh, shall we invite uh, Bu Elvira to speak up? Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, I think I was just reciting what I said before. So um, I differentiate learning and uh, my learning activities by giving various instructions also. Uh, but those various instructions, uh, they have to meet uh, what the students need and how they are like. And also try my best to involve um, as much a, very, a variety of activities as I can. Okay, thank you so much. We have a very good one. Everybody, I want you to type down on the chat box, CPP. Okay, type down on the chat box, please. I would like to see that, CPP. Okay, three letters. And remember this throughout the session because you're going to deal with that a lot later and tell me what you know about the CPP. Okay, CPP, okay, remember that. Type down on the chat box. Have you got that, Elvira? The CPP on the chat box? Do yes, Mr. Adi. There are oh, yeah. so many participants typing CPP on the chat box. Yeah, okay. We'll find out what CPPs are. Yeah, don't worry because it's going to be related to your differentiated learning, the way you differentiate your, uh, your learning process. Yeah, okay, good. Now, everyone, be ready with your fingers again because, oh no, this one, uh, fingers and papers. Yeah, prepare your, your uh, piece of paper, everybody. Uh, show me a piece of paper to the screen. Come on. Show me a piece of paper to the screen. If you don't have paper, it means you're not ready to learn. Yeah, I can Remember see karma. Mr. Nanda, <laughs> Mr. Okay. Amiruddin. Okay, good. Mr. Jose, yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. Great, great. Miss Devi, yeah, I think. Okay, people got their papers, yeah, Mbak Eka, yeah? Yeah. Okay, good. Everyone, uh, please write down one sentence on your paper. Describe this chart with a sentence you can make it compound, complex, complex compound, up to you. Uh, and then later you're going to show it to the screen, yeah? This, uh, all of these words, combine them into a sentence and phrases. Can we give them about 30 seconds, but Eka? Yeah, sure. Oh, okay, count down. Maybe one minute, one minute. I'm being nice. 60 minutes. 60 minutes or yeah. 60 seconds, I think. Oh, sorry, 60 seconds. <laughs> 60 seconds, 60 seconds, yeah. Countdown, go. Stop, everybody, hands up. Hands up in the air, everybody. Hands up in the air, where are your hands? 
Come on, come on, come on, come on. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, don't cheat, don't cheat. <laughs> Remember karma? Okay. All right, now, what we're going to do, everybody, I want you to show it to the screen first. And then later, Mbak Ika will see who's showing it up first, and then we're going to invite them to speak. Come on, show it to the screen, everybody. Okay, we'll read what I've uh, written on my paper. Uh, differentiating instructions have multiple options by taking in information, making sense of ideas, and expressing what's been learned. Ah, your TOEFL score must be very high, yeah? <laughs> because you're using the right connectors and uh, prepositional uh, phrases there. Amazing, very good, very good. Thank you. The kind of applause for Ibu Kartika, everybody. Very good one. Okay, Ibu Kartika, uh, now I have a question for you. Uh, what does it mean by uh, uh, taking in information in a different way? How can you make, how can you see your students take in information from you in the class in different ways? How can you see that? Um, the student can take in information, I think, by um, uh, giving them uh, the, the information and then they will, uh, they will do it individually or in groups so they can, uh, take the, uh, like share their ideas one and another something like that so they will uh, share or give their opinion after getting the information from my from me very good so it means that the students everybody the students may have different learning ways is that right ways of learning yeah different ways of understanding things different ways in taking the information that you give them so you need to learn their learning preferences. In the past, we know it as learning styles, yeah? But today we call it as learning preferences. So the learning preferences for students, maybe they can learn individually. Some students can learn individually. Some students can learn collaboratively, okay, in a group. Some students can learn by, by you know, like, like in a whole class by presenting yeah, something to the classroom. So uh, information can be, can be uh, taken in different ways. And, and that's what we need to be aware of when we are going to differentiate our instruction. So it means that you anticipate some students who wants to learn individually, okay? And students who wants to learn in the group and students who want to learn uh, as a whole class project. Yeah, because some students are good at project, uh, as a project, uh, part of a project, yeah, team. And uh, this is something that you want to pay attention, okay? And what about making sense of ideas? Can anybody uh, raise their hand? How can uh, you differentiate your instructions uh, to make the students uh, able to, to see the idea of, of the lesson? All right, so uh, what I always do, usually I, We'll give them some examples first, examples or like a situation that is related to the topic that I am going to share with them. And then after that, I uh, clearly state the instruction to them. If they do not understand what I mean, then later I will invite them to give me questions, something like that. As simple as that, <laughs> the one that I always do with my students. Nice. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Bui. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, everybody, uh, have you ever heard the term KISS? K I double -S, S. KISS. Have you ever heard that? Well, I know you know KISS, but this is a, a, an acronym. Yeah. K I S S, -S, -S, -S triple S's uh, that I would like to introduce to you. If you want to make sure that the students can make sense ideas, what you need to do is number one, keep your instructions or keep your process of teaching simple, okay? Number two, short. Number three, straight to the point. I know teachers, sometimes we would like to give so much information that confuse the students. I know teachers love explaining things, but doesn't, unfortunately it doesn't help the students to make sense of the learning idea. Yeah, so that's why kiss your three things. What do you kiss? Three things. Number one, kiss your instruction. When you give instruction, you kiss it. So it will help the different, different learners to understand it easily. Number two, kiss your presentation. When you present something, kiss it. Okay, number three, 
kiss your explanation. Okay? Kiss them. If you can, as much as you can, make it only three steps, three stages. That's how you differentiate uh, your, your, uh, your students' understanding of your idea, yeah, of the lesson that you're, you're teaching them. Okay, great. Next, what can you uh, do to differentiate your instruction so the students have those opportunities so they can express what they've known uh, or what they've learned throughout the session with you? Okay. Yeah, I think it's depending on the type of teaching we'll give. For example, we focus on the teaching that based on auditory approach. Of course, the student will understand better if he has a type of learning auditory learners. So I think uh, uh, it's depending on the kind of learning approach we give to the student. Of course, we we give um, uh, many of slides, for example, and we want to know how a well, visual type of learning. Of course, those who have the ability of the type of learning uh, visual, the student with visual type of learning will understand better than the other student with different kind of type of learning. For this, the third one, when you want your students to express what they've learned, you provide three elements. For visual learners, make sure there is an opportunity for them to express what they have understood using visual aids, okay? So you can ask them, okay, who can draw something of what you've learned today, okay? And then show it to the screen, all right? Or if you're in a classroom, stick what you've learned today. You can, you can make a chart, you can make a picture, you can make a, a, a writing, and then stick it on the wall over here on the left side. That's for visual. Okay, for students who are learning visually. All right, and then for those students who are learning audio with some auditory uh, learning preference, uh, preference, then you can ask them who would like to tell stories about or tell us what you've learned orally. Okay, so then their friends can listen and they, they can also uh, combine their, their speaking and listening skill at the same time. All right, and then what about the students who are psychomotoric? What about students who are, you know, bodily kinesthetic? They, they like to move around. What can you ask them to do? You can ask them to, you can mime. Can you mime what you've learned today? And then let the students guess what you've got, okay? Or uh, create an activity which is physically active. Then the students can, the, the other students can guess. Okay, Bapak Ibu, so you are uh, doing this not alone. When you create differentiated instruction, you don't plan your lesson alone. You need to plan your lesson with your students, with your different students, because they are the ones who are uh, actually having the differences. You are the facilitator. What you need to do is to facilitate the differences. And you cannot do that alone. Are you planning your lesson alone, everyone? Babu, are you still planning your lesson alone today? Or should you plan your lesson together with your students to get some inputs from them? So if you are going to make a differentiated learning environment, then you need to make sure when you plan a lesson, you sit down with some of your students that you can call them in, in our term, in my term, we call it SLT. What is that? Type down on the chat box, everybody, SLT. What is SLT? super learning team. When you're going to plan your lesson, you work with your super learning team that will probably you, you already arrange in a way so that uh, the students who will become your SLT, they come from different learning preferences and also probably different learning levels too. Your super learning team is the team that will work with you to make your lesson plan so then you can accommodate the differences of your learners, okay? Remember that, yeah, baby, yeah? So because that's how you differentiate your instruction. If you do it alone, you only guess, oh, who is having visual, who is not very fast learner, then that's going to be difficult for you to, to anticipate your lesson plan. But if you've got your students with you sitting down and then you got input when you're doing the lesson plan, we will talk about that later, yeah? Uh, usually those who have already come uh, to some, some of my sessions with the stages of the lesson, you already know all of these things. That's why I asked you earlier, yeah? Okay, good. Now we, we go a bit faster. Everybody, let's play. Are you ready? 
everybody, I want you to do this. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, five sentences. Uh, there are some words which is in anagram, uh, you know, uh, jumbled. So I want you to rearrange that that letter. Yeah. So make it uh, uh, make it a proper word. Okay. Can we give them? Well, maybe uh, five minutes. Oh, sorry, five seconds for one number. Yeah. So thirty seconds, Mbak Eka. Is it okay? Thirty seconds to do Thanks. this. Yeah. Okay, Mbak Eka. Thirty seconds. Count down, everybody. Let's do this. Ah, uh, the whole. Answer from Miss Maya, one to five. <laughs> <laughs> Big round of applause to all of you, everybody. Whoa, amazing. 30 seconds done, right? Super duper. So, okay. Uh, shall we invite the one that, that's, that's done all of the six, uh, the, the five, sorry, all of the five sentences? Who is that? Yeah, I think Miss Maya, are you there? Maya. Okay. Bu Maya, would you like to share what you've got? So, so basically, uh, what is it? We have to know their profile. Um, some of them, um, what their interests are. It's very easy if they, we know what they like, like that. And then that's how to approach them. And then uh, how we need to approach them because some of them are, some of them are uh, quick in absorbing, like, uh, what is it? In absorbing lessons. The other ones are quite uh, need some time to uh, absorb the lesson. So I think that's what they're you know. Oh, okay, good. So basically, knowing your students' uh, profile, yeah, observe uh, what what are your students actually uh, uh, learning learning preferences. Yeah, very good. Okay, and number two, but Eka, would you like to choose the one who did number two? I think uh, we should give that for Miss Devi Cynthia. Okay, Bu Devi Cynthia, please. Yes. Mm -hmm. Number two. Yes. Okay. The give this, yeah. The, the give the students opportunities to express what they already know and what they think about the lesson. Ah. What do you think? What does it mean? What do you think about this sentence? In terms of differentiated learning. Well, it's like a preliminary. <laughs> Uh, questions to your students, like asking them what they know about the certain topic that we're going to come up with later, that we're going to discuss later uh, further in the class. Uh, I just want to know first what they have already known, so I know where to start with them. And yeah, of course, I would like to ask, I would like to know what they think about that. Do they think it's um, useful for them or not? Sometimes we need to explain more how useful something that they're going to learn, right? <laughs> ah, nice. Very good. You call this, what do you call this sentence? It's diagnostic. Yeah, diagnostic. Assess That's the word. Yeah? Diagnostic <laughs> assessment. What does it mean? Mm -hmm. It means that you need to know first well, knowing your student's profile, that's before the class start. You need to make sure before you teach your students, find out some backgrounds about the student's social background, the student's academic background, the student's, uh, what do you call that, learning quality and all that and preferences, yeah? So you need to find out that before you teach them in a term or in a semester or in a, or in a year, okay? That's knowing profile, knowing your students. And then along the way, what you got, you're, you're going to do in every session, then you're going to do what you call assessment, diagnostic assessment, okay? So you want to know what they know and what they think about it. Which one is better, teaching something that the students uh, like or teach, teaching something that the students don't like? Which one is better, Bapak Ibu? And which one will come much better to their to their understanding teaching them something that they uh, they like or something that they don't like can can i have that on the or maybe bu, 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 bu Devi, can you help answer that of course with uh, something they like something they like yeah Bapak no matter Ibu? how difficult it is they will be able to understand that if they like it yeah, if they like the lesson, you win them already. You win the learning process already. Why? Because if they like it, they will put effort. Yes or no? If they like the lesson, they will put effort to make themselves understand. To make themselves understand, yeah? They will put effort to listen to you. 
they will put effort to try to do everything that you give them. But if they don't like it, hmm, you're going to do hard work. That's why there are many, many teachers saying, sir, I've done this, I've done that, but they're not doing it. They're not making it. They're not making it happen. What happened? Because they don't like it. Okay, so that's the problem. So how to make them like it? Build their interest. Start with building the student's interest. And that's where you can uh, you can find out during your diagnostic assessment. Yeah, good. Number three, Mbaika. Thank you, thank you. Number three. Yes, I think we can ask Miss Eka Putri. Mm -hmm. uh, so number three, make sure the students understand and enjoy learning at their current level before they learn any further. So if we want to make sure that our students have understood about the lesson that we delivered to them, they will enjoy it. They will ask many things to us. And then um, what else? When we give them the, the questions or assignment that uh, maybe the level is higher than before, they can do this well because they have known the tactic or the strategy to overcome it. I think that's all. Thank you. And this is actually a follow through from what Ibu uh, Devi Cynthia was saying that we need to make them like, we need to make them like the lesson. And how can you make them like the lesson? By building their interest. And before you go further, and this is differentiated learning, Baba Ibu, before you go further with the lesson, make sure that they enjoy first. Because there is no point of you keep going if they don't enjoy the learning process at that moment, or if they don't get the idea of what they are learning. It means you're just catching up the curriculum. But unfortunately, that's what we have to do at school. I know, I know, but I know the government is trying to fix that now. That's why we are implementing differentiated learning in classrooms. Okay, Mabebu? So uh, hopefully that, that kind of problems will, will be resolved very, very soon. Yeah, will be resolved. Okay, good. And uh, thank you. Number four, Baika. Okay, ask them if they are. Okay, okay. I ask them if they are there to each up. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, I, I haven't found it. Okay. Ask them. Okay. Ask them if they are ready to scale. Oh. Right. That's a good yep. one. Yes, yes. Ask them to do the ska dance. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Yes. Ask them if they are Ask ready, them if they are ready to scale ready up. To ready. scale up. Yes. So, Baba Ibu, in differentiated learning, if you want the students to go further to the next level of your lesson, yeah, level of difficulty, level of speed, level of complexity. Yeah. So then ask them first, are you ready? Are you ready to go further? Okay. Are you ready to go up? Are we ready for the next activity? If they're not ready, hold on. Yeah. Don't push. There's no point of pushing students to, to, to go with you, to keep up with you, but they're not actually ready. They will be tergopo gopo. Is that right? The, the, the term? They will be like catching up with you with, with a very difficult uh, difficult way, yeah. Okay, good. Now the last one, number five, Mr. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you for the last one. Offer some options for the students to complete the given task or activities from easy to challenging level of difficulty. You are top scorer, sir, yeah? Easy peasy okay. for Mr. Nanda. <laughs> Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, Mr. Nanda. Okay, thank you. So, Pananda, uh, what do you think about this lesson, about, about this sentence? Uh, for this, uh, offer some options for the students to complete the given tasks or uh, activities from easy to challenging level of difficulty. So, it's like I'm giving them, I, I offer them uh, to answer this, okay, uh, do you uh, may you answer this, uh, everyone? Uh, but it's not like random. I give them like the first, the easy one first. Okay, like the simple one, the simple. Uh, let's say in my class, I used to separate it into three stages. The easy one, uh, like the vocabulary first, and then the second one, I start with the grammar. And the challenging one is start with the writing. So I, I start them with the vocabulary first. Okay, after that, leveling up uh, or scale up to the second one. 
to the grammar and then after that uh, i give them the challenging one is like the worksheet or the writing like that so yes in one word you say you call it scaffold, scaffold. okay scaffold it means that you do it step by step yeah and where the students stop it means that's where their level is mm -hmm. okay when the student find it difficult it means that's where they are now mm -hmm. so how can you challenge them to go to, to the next level well then you can probably ask them first are you ready to go to the next level if they're oh. ready then okay let's do this one you try it oh sir i find it difficult it's not it's not i don't know what to do okay then you facilitate by giving them some scaffolding activity okay why don't you do this first one after that do this and then do this so remember your role as a teacher is to set That's your true. student to success yes. not to fail if you give them the hard part the hard times and they they fail they're not gonna they're not going to follow you they're not going to keep up with you yeah okay very good well done give me a round to all of them to the five people who participated yes this is the answer everybody so you are correct yeah well uh, there is a ticket for you to go to hawaii uh, ask Mbak Eka later, yeah? <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, Mbak Eka. Now you must be responsible, yeah? Going to Hawaii. <laughs> so, Bapak Ibu, when the students are struggling, okay? When the students are struggling, but you need to catch up with your material, with your curriculum, what you have to do? Take notes, okay? Take notes of those students who are struggling, okay? The next time you invite them to come with you, and then sit down and listen to them, okay? Listen to their opinion, what they find struggling, what they find difficult, what they find uh, uh, to make it easy for them. How can they learn the easy way? So you need to stop and sit down. Yes, when you apply differentiated learning, Bapak Ibu, you need to be more like, uh, alert, uh, you know, like a learning consultant because you need to make sure that your students also are uh, with you uh, along the way. You don't want to leave them behind because if you leave them behind, then they will feel left behind. When they, they, when they feel left behind, what's gonna happen? They will, not, they will not care anymore about the learning, yeah? Okay, good, thank you. Now, to make differentiated learning works effectively in the class, you need to make sure that the learning content process and product, CPP, can you see there? CPP, what are they? Content, Content process, and process. product. Yeah. That's the CPP. Yeah, Bapak Ibu, yeah? Content, process, and product. The key words of uh, differentiated learning. Yeah, you need to make sure that they are all well prepared. And remember, do not plan your lesson alone. You need to work with your different students who's got those differentiated needs. Yeah, so work with the students to accommodate their learning needs and preferences. Okay, remember this key, yeah, Ibu, yeah? That's the CPP, content, process, product, but you're not designing it alone. You need to work together with your students. Yeah, that's the power of, of uh, differentiated learning. The students play a vital role in, 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 in your uh, lesson planning stage. Yeah, okay, good. Next, when you create your differentiated instruction uh, for your students incorporating the content, the process, and the product that you don't, once again, Bapak Ibu, I highlight this. Remember, do not plan everything alone. The power of differentiated learning is on your students because your students are the ones who have the differences. For you, you got one difference, <laughs> okay? You got only one difference, but your students got differences. So you need to work with the students in order to work on the lesson planning. That's true, Pak Dewanto. There will be a little extra work on the lesson planning activity because you need to sit down with your students. But you only feel it hard at the beginning. When I'm doing this in, when I was uh, doing this in Morocco, uh, when I was doing this in Australia, the same thing. First time, it was difficult to do differentiated learning. Uh, and, and at the end, I find out like, oh, actually there is a pattern. Yes, when you come up with your students and then you get input from them and then you put, even sometimes you will be much helped by your students because their ideas about differentiate, differentiated activity is very, very spot on, very, very amazing. 
Okay, so that's why you need to sit down and listen to your students. The power of differentiated learning is on, on your students, Bapak Ibu ya, not on us as a teacher. The power of us is to facilitate those needs, yeah, the relevance of your learning with your uh, uh, target learning outcome, with your target activity in the class and the student's participation, yeah. Perfect, that will actually uh, give an, uh, an effect or uh, to the learning environment. That's also part of the things that you want to pay attention, yeah? Okay, now, <clears throat> quickly, everybody, before we go to the breakout room, and then uh, maybe we'll have about 15 minutes uh, later for a breakout room activity, but 10 minutes only for you to discuss quickly, and then after that, come back, because you only need to decide what you have to do. Yeah, before learning term begins, uh, this is before learning term begins. It means that before the semester, before the year, Bapak Ibu, yeah? So what you have to do is learn about your student's background. Yeah, learning profile and characteristic. That's before your uh, time. And then the second, conduct learners diagnostic assessment at the beginning and also throughout the session later, like what we discussed earlier. And then categorize the students, but not to be boxed. Be careful. Categorize so you know, not for you to box them into uh, visual to visual, learn uh, audio to audio. No, 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 you don't do it that way. Differentiated learning is not about making people put in one box, okay? Not making students put in one box, but you still have them in different, uh, what do you call, uh, the, uh, different group of learners in one group, but they, you already know their category because later the activity will be done by those learners with the same, uh, with, with the relevant level of uh, uh, learning uh, preference or ability, yeah? Okay, so the categorization is not to make your students become boxed. Remember that, Bapak Ibu, yeah? Do not put the same students in one group. That's not the way, what, what you call differentiated learning. Differentiated learning is having different students, but with different activities uh, in one group of learning, yeah? Okay, good. Next, before the session, lesson plan, based on your students' characteristics. So that's why when you make a lesson plan, you must involve your students, yeah? So uh, you, can, you, can, you can make sure that the learning will be more effective. And the next, uh, number two, create more collaborative learning activities adapt, uh, using an uh, adaptive assessment task and scaffold, okay? Three steps, lesson plan with students, collaborative learning activities that you will uh, make everybody get involved, low, middle, high students, they're all working together, yeah? And then lesson and task delivery, you scaffold, you do it step by step, all right? Until the students feel uh, uh, ready to go to the next level. Okay, during the learning, okay, if you are in a classroom, divide your classroom walls. If you're teaching in a classroom, divide your classroom walls or your digital presentation, uh, if you are teaching online, into three categories. Yeah, so you can call it one star, two stars, three stars. One star for the students who are uh, uh, probably uh, the, 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 the struggling students, they can put everything there. Yeah, if they are uh, the last one, if they finish an, an, an activity the last, you can ask them to put it in the number one, for example. Number two for the middle uh, speed learner. And uh, number three for the fast speed learner. You decide, but that's just an idea. Yeah, but there are three categories, remember? low, middle, and high, yes? Uh, so uh, high here means doesn't mean that they are always good. Maybe they can do it fast, yeah? But maybe it's all wrong, you never know, right? Do you do it fast, but it's all wrong, you never know, okay? And then anticipate the achievable learning outcome for each learner's group. So when you ask them to do something for each group, make sure it is achievable. Don't be too over uh, expectation. Don't put it like over their capacity. And then make sure that each activity leads to the target learning outcome for each group of students. So uh, even though they are not being grouped, but actually in the class, you will see that there are groups of students. You know, uh, imaginatively, you know that, not for you to box them. And the last number four, ask students to choose which activity that they feel confident to do. Yeah, so it means that they have their freedom to do it, yeah? Okay, good. And then now let's do this. Uh, the anticipated problems, uh, make sure that the learners are not aware that they are being categorized. Yes, because that's only to your knowledge, only for you. And then uh, start the grouping with similar profile in one group if you want, or you can mix them, yeah? You can start with similar, but then mix them. You can start to make them feel good, but then after that mix. Starting is only to scaffold. 
the baby, yeah? Uh, when you group them with a similar group, only to scaffold. And after that, you can mix them, yeah? Step by step, yeah? And then once you see that they have raised their learning capacity, then challenge them to go to the next level. See, you start moving them to the different or to the higher level if they are ready, yeah? And then if they're not ready, let them stay, but keep them busy with the activity until they feel confident with their level and they are ready to go to the next level. Yeah, okay, good. That's the, the anticipated problems. Okay, after the learning process, don't forget to ask them how the class went and whether they feel included or excluded throughout the lesson. This is important. In differentiated learning, uh, they must feel that they're excluded. Uh, they must feel that they're included, not excluded, yeah? And what did they learn most from the lesson? Okay, Break, breakout room activity, Baika, do we have time? Yes, yes, let's do this 10 minutes. And then after that question and answer for about maybe five minutes, yeah? Okay, uh, let's do this. Okay, I will open the breakout room, yeah, sir. Yes, please. How was that? Chaotic? <laughs> how was, how was the, the Zoom, uh, the breakout room activity? Are you okay? Oops, okay, I'm on sir. The Okay, all good, yeah? Okay, so uh, basically uh, when, when uh, we want to, uh, we would like to, to get the, the idea only for you to be able to identify on that page which activity suits for which level of students, okay? Only that, as simple as that, yeah? So don't, don't, don't complicate like what uh, Bruno Mars said. Oh no, I, whoever said that, yeah. Don't complicate life. Life is already complicated. Keep it simple, yeah. Okay, let's do it, but I can't. Shall we choose uh, any groups who are ready? Okay, yeah. Uh, actually, in my break room uh, back then, uh, I, I think most of my friends there, they have the problem with the connection, so none of them speaking. I already called them, but that's fine. I make something here for low student i start with picture guessing first uh the picture guessing first uh relate to holiday activity and then for the other activity for low low level here the vocabulary the vocabulary that relate to the holiday and for average for the average uh hear more 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 about the grammar uh, like i show the writing first uh, the text there and then from the text after i read i asked them to read and then i because i used to make it hybrid and also online uh, i underline which one that uh, has the meaning of future plan uh, like the future tense will going to or even the uh, but for this level, I focus only the future tense, like will and going to first. And then uh, for the high level, uh, I still like uh, start with the grammar, but it's like uh, not not comparing, but I show them that for future plan, future tenses, uh, oh yeah, future plan, they can use to kind of uh, grammar first like future tense will going to and then uh, present continuous that uh, saying about for a future plan after that uh, continue with the speaking uh, for the peer in the interview about their uh, what is it about their holiday plan and which place uh, which place uh, they 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 want to visit that one thank you <laughs> Fernanda, yeah, you finally made it. Good, good. So, Thank you. Yes, Bapak Ibu, the basic idea is all about uh, knowing uh, the, the, the students and then knowing the material. Yeah, if you know the material, then you will, and you will be able to, to identify, ah, this one will be good for this level of students. So, for example, for grammar, for grammar, for example, like teaching future tense, as Pak Nanda was suggesting. So for the, for the let's say, uh, we, we put them low, but there is no, no low students, basically. We, we put them on the first level students. The novice students, they will probably only, you can ask them if it's about future. Uh, when we talk about future, this is the question that you can give them. Are we talking about now, yesterday, or tomorrow? Can you see? That's differentiated learning for these low level students. And then for the middle level students, your question will be, okay, if we talk about tomorrow, 
who can tell me what are the time markers that may we, we may use? What are the time, uh, uh, what do you call the time adverbs? Tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, next week, next year, that is for middle level. For higher level, who can give me a sentence and tell me your plan this coming Sunday? Can you see? One, one grammar point, one grammar item, target language, yeah, but with three differentiated questions. Okay? As simple as that, yeah? Okay, good. Thank you so much, everybody. Big round of applause, Fernanda. Good point. And when you feel that the students are very fast, then, okay, now, how many kinds of future uh, uh, sentences we can create? For example, can, can I say, I'm going to Bali this Sunday, is it okay? Or should I say, I will go to Bali? Or I'm going to go to Bali. Then if you feel that your students are higher, then you can go further to that level, yeah? So, okay, good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Next one, by Aika. Uh, shall we ask Pak Nanda to choose the next group? One more, and then after that, we have uh, a question. Pak choose the next okay. group. Okay, uh, I think we choose my favorite number, group eight. <laughs> <laughs> you're not lucky. Group eight, you're not lucky. Okay, but, uh, group eight. Group eight? In group eight, we have uh, ha, Miss Hanifatul, Miss mm -hmm. Isha Isnayani, Miss mm. Purnama, dan Pak Rifki Amin, ya, sama okay. Do Amat. Yes. Maybe okay, one, one of them uh, can. One of them? Can can share the, the group's idea. Don't worry, Bapak Ibu, we are learning here. Yeah? If you are right, uh, you go to heaven. Uh, if you are wrong, you go to heaven too. Don't worry, both of you goes to heaven. <laughs> go to heaven. Okay, come on. Uh, anyone from the group eight? The favorite number of Pananda? Oh, remember karma, Bapak Ibu. When you're in the class, this is what's gonna happen to you. When the teacher asks, nobody responds. Nobody responses. Oh. Okay, all right, come on, group eight, before the karma happens. <laughs> come on, who is that in group eight? If no group eight, then in five seconds, we will, oh, okay. Oh yeah, Miss Reni. Reni. Yeah, <laughs> very brave, Miss Reni, please. Okay, Bu Reni, come on. Oh my God, we need to do some threats, yeah? To give them threats first so they will do it, yeah? Yes, Amazing. I don't know, I don't want to have karma, yeah? Oh, you don't want to <laughs> Okay, Please. Okay, so yeah, we are in the five and six group. Yeah, so I see in the uh, the screen that we learn about vocabularies in the uh, about the holiday, and I see there 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 is a adjective that they say that I don't like, and then and then I like, and then I'm good at, and then so it's boring because it's boring. So so. For uh, in our discussion, we say in the lower level, we will uh, the activities is about the vocabulary practice. So they guess about. So we provide some kind of picture. So so the teacher will provide some kind of, of different picture about the holiday, just like in the book. Uh, but we provide it in the bigger one, so the students can see the pictures of about related to the topic yeah, about the holiday, and then. The students will like uh, guessing what kind of, uh, what's the picture about. And then for higher level, the students can show and tell, or they can tell about uh, the picture. Yeah, so they can tell about the picture, for example, uh, there is sunscreen. And then, for example, what do you know about sunscreen or the function or something like that? That's for the higher level of students. And then maybe the highest one will write about the holiday plan by uh listing some things uh, uh about the holiday things things that you need in the holiday and then you write the plan or holiday plan so the highest one will be uh writing and so the grammar is about the adjective and the vocabulary is about the holiday something like that. Wow. <laughs> 
<laughs> wow, you, you're not all expert of differentiated learning, yeah? So you know, you have to do with it. Amazing, very good. Thank you, Bureni. Big round of applause for you, Bureni, everybody. So yes, when you. You are, uh, when you already know like that, how you're, you're distributing the activities for the students, then later you can challenge yourself by, what about if I have one group of students, they are all planning a, a trip next week, okay? In one group, there is low, middle, and high. They are all planning a trip together. What can we give to the low level of uh, lower level students? Okay, can you think of some things that we must bring mm -hmm. for our trip? Okay, can you see? Bring yeah. so the students, the low level students will think only about uh, maybe bags the or yeah, the things, the nouns. The middle level students. Okay, can you uh, 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 suggest some ideas? Look for some yeah. pictures, travel destinations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you see? Travel destination, it's it's higher level, right? Because they must know whether it is good or not. And then they must give yeah. a reason why they should a go reason. there. Yes, yeah. and then for the higher level, then they make the itinerary. Oh, yeah, you right. know, travel itinerary. It means that the, yes, this, the agenda. Yeah, when to yeah. leave, where to go, and all that. Can you see, Baby Wu? And that will automatically come with content and process. The one that you do just now is the content and process of learning, differentiation, in, the, in differentiation. Yeah, can you see? Okay, big round of applause for the two, Pak Nanda's group and Bureni's group. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, super. Okay, now question and answer, Baika. So I think we still have time for one or two questions. Bapak Ibu, please, if you have question, you can use the raise hand feature or use your actual hand. Yeah, yeah we got one question from Pak Amirudin, I think. Hmm. Pak Amirudin, let's do this, Pak. We are in this together. <laughs> Pak Amir? Are you with us? Thank you, uh, <laughs> Pak. Uh, yeah, here is my question, Pak. The first one is this. Uh, I'm sorry, probably I have to switch off my camera because I really have unstable connection here. So I will speak, is it, if it is okay, I will speak while uh, switch off my camera. Yes, it's okay. 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 Uh, here is my first question, uh, Pak, Pak Adi. Uh, in your opinion, uh, in this, uh, what is that? In this differentiated learning, learning, learning uh, what do you prefer? Uh, is it the process or the result? Uh, because it will be important for us uh, and also for our students because uh, we are, what is that? We can call it, we are forced to uh, create a good result for our students. Uh, that's the first question. And the second question is, uh, is that about what you mentioned before uh, in, the, in, the, in the middle of your uh, speaking about like, I mean, like it is about motivation, motivation of the students. Uh, actually, the thing that I want to hear most is that about uh, creating students' motivation or uh, creating students interest is interest in our material uh, because one thing I, I keep in my heart is that uh, uh, a teacher will be a myth someday because uh, students can learn English in many ways. They can learn English in, from social media, from YouTube and, and so on. And, and also one of my experience is that uh, when uh, our students have a good motivation in the class, they will be our partner in teaching. Uh, I have some students in my class uh, that I don't have to worry about what, what my method that I have to use, what technique that I have to use. They will understand all the material that I, I give to them because they have the motivation in learning English. I don't have to worry about my material. I don't have to worry about everything because they will be my partner in teaching in the class because they have the motivation. 
but the the problem is that when we find a lot of students who does who don't have a good motivation in learning English, we have tried uh, a lot of method. We have tried a lot of uh, technique that that they will they won't work uh, on them because they don't have the motivation motivation. So, what do you think about uh, that problem? Uh, uh, thank you. I think that's all from. Thank you, Baika. Would you like me to answer, or we collect all the questions first? Yeah, I think with Mr. Rian, Rian Dita, it's quite similar, yeah? The question, I will read that for us. How do we develop their interest in learning, reading comprehension, any tips using differentiated learning? I think that's also related to uh, inter learning motivation, yeah, Padi? And the second one from Mr. Jose, uh, in a diverse class in terms of students level, how can we keep the students from becoming envious on one another or as we divert their assignment task? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, let, me, let me start with the first question, uh, Amir. Number one, uh, uh, again, it's about, uh, sorry. Uh, sorry, Mbak Eka, uh, the first question from Pak Amir is about the, uh, uh, the motivation. What, what do you motivation. prefer? I mean, what's yeah, what the I first prefer. question is, what do I you prefer, prefer in yes. this uh, differentiated learning? Is okay. it uh, focusing on the process or, or the result? Okay, so if you ask my preference, I would like to prefer the CPP in my class. Like what I'm doing with you now, actually I'm doing CPP. There is content difference. If you see, uh, I, I gave you question number one until five, who can do it? And then the group work, oh, they're not doing it, that's fine. Just do what you can, okay? So I'm doing content and process. And for the product later, there is uh, an activity that I, I gave you uh, also on the documents that we sent out. Uh, you can do it and later you can submit it to me and I will see from that product how much you can do from that, that activity. So if you ask me, I would like them CPP is actually included in the process, uh, sorry, in, in my uh, differentiated learning. But if I want to throw it back to you, what about you? What do you want? You can do it step by step. So if you want to start with content differentiation, that's fine. So if it is content, content differentiation, then it means you will make, you will identify which activity or which task on the page, on the lesson that you feel is good for the three categories of students, yeah? And then if you feel that you want to uh, uh, focus on the process, then it means you want to make the students learn more the way they learn. If you focus on process, it means learn the way they learn. So they know, oh, I learn better when I read. Oh, I learn better when I speak. Oh, I learn better when I <clears throat> listen. Yeah, so if you, if you focus on the process, it means you are aiming to, to, to make them aware of their learning ways, their learning preference, yeah? And then if you want the product, then it means you want to see the result, whether from this learning, they can actually uh, learn effectively with the way they already uh, learn, yeah, Pat? So you decide as the teacher, what do you want to achieve in that lesson, in that session? That's number one. Number two, uh, about motivation, but by this is general questions that I've already got. I've got this whenever I go uh, around the world. I've been to seven continents, more than 40 countries. The same question can appear. What happens if my students are not motivated? When my students are motivated, it's easy, sir. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Yes, no problem. But when the students are not motivated, it's hard. So my first question to you, when your students are not motivated, what uh, what did what did you think they are not interested in? You need to find out first what they are not interested in, why they are not motivated, because the cycle. Baba Ibu, please uh, write this down. Number one, interest. Type down on the chat box, yeah. While I'm saying this, interest, like, self motivation, self effort. If you really want to build the. Uh, Amir was, how can I build or create interest and motivation? You need to build with, uh, you need to start with your interest building activity. So that's why when I did the class at the beginning, what I did with you, well, come on, 
on, show me your fingers. And then after that, let's do this. So I try to build your interest. And then you feel, ah, oh, I think I like this session. And then what happens to you? You become motivated, self-motivated. And the rest, you will put your self-effort. So that's the stages. Yeah, so uh, you need to start with, what is it? I, number one, interest. Build your learner interest. Number two, what is it? Make them like the lesson. Yes, usually if they are already interested, they, you don't have to make them. They will, uh, they will like the lesson by themselves. Okay, and then they will build their self-motivation. So your hard work will be on the building interest activity. So how can you do this? Do not plan your lesson alone. Why your students are not interested in your class? Because it's your lesson plan, not their lesson plan. Okay? Can you get the idea? If it's their lesson plan, it means it is their interest. Bapak Ibu, if it's your lesson plan, it's your interest. Yeah, can you see the difference? So that's the challenge, yeah? So involve your students even before you begin the lesson. So when you sit down with your lesson plan, hey, hey, Tony, Jack, come here, Tini, sit. I Look at this page, what can we do? Which one do you like, Tony? Tony is, for example, low, Tini is middle, and Jack is high. What about you, Tono? What do you think about this? What about you, Tini? So from their opinion, then you build your lesson plan. That's what I do, Bapak Ibu, wherever I travel. When I was in Thailand, when I was in Morocco, when I was in down in the uh, in Australia, that's what I did when I was in my plan. I sit down with my team. We call it SLT. What is SLT? Super learning team. Super learning. Super learning team. If you don't have it, don't dream to have a great class. Okay, so you need to have your SLT. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's question number two. Number three was from uh, Jose. Yeah. Uh, Pak Jose, ya, Pak Jose uh, how to make the students will not feel that they are being differentiated when we are giving them the task? Well, then you don't ask, uh, you, you don't tell them that this is for, okay, this is for this group of students, yeah? <laughs> you will know, right? Okay, this is for, uh, well, uh, this is for these people. <laughs> oh, that's dangerous, Bapak Ibu. So what can you do? You throw the question and see who will grab it. Who, the one who will grab it usually, the one who can do it. Do you agree? Yes, those who cannot do it, they will not grab it. Then you will know that's their level. Yes, so when you throw it to the class, do not, uh, do not specify first. Okay, who would like to, for example, in the context of the traveling, yeah? Uh, going to travel, uh, making a lesson plan uh, using uh, future tense. So maybe the question that you will do, who would like to support me, to support our class, to uh, find out the things that we want to do. Uh, do we want to bring? Who wants to do it? Eh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, nobody. If nobody, then the SLT will work. The SLT will raise hand. Yeah, the learning leaders, they raise hand. Sir, I will start. Okay, good. Now, can you make a team? Then your SLT will make a team with the students who will support with the uh, making uh, the list of the things to bring. Can you see? That's your strategy. Yeah, Bapak Ibu, yeah. So your SLT works in order to support your uh, learning process in the differentiated learning. Okay, so that's uh, Pak Jose. Hopefully that answers, yeah. Do not, uh, we do it subtly, in a subtle way. Okay, in a very subtle way. Do not make it very, uh, uh, what do you call? Uh, don't, don't, don't make it too, 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 too evident for them. Oh, I'm a lower level because my teacher always give me the easy questions. <laughs> so they know, of course, right? Well, you don't give them the easy questions, you throw it up in the air and let's see who will grab it, yeah? Okay? Yeah. So anticipate your questions, anticipate your activities. That's why it's called differentiated learning. All right, Baba Ibu, that's it, Mecca. Okay. I think that's a very awesome answers, Mr. Adi. Thank you so much. Well, educators, due to the limited time, we're sorry, I have to end the Q&A session, but don't worry if you still have any questions, you can send them to our email, yeah? Contact at mentarigroups.com. Well, everyone, now we are at the end of today's session.
and hopefully you have got insightful experience from today's session. And on the behalf of Mentari Group and Cambridge University Press, we would like to say thank you and hope to see you again in the next event. So stay healthy and have a good weekend, everyone. <music>